Welcome to our first or our uh, beta version of uh, Tough Love. Um, we still don't know what, what, what this exactly is and wh why are we doing it for, but we are here. Something uh, brought us to, together, maybe Mark's uh, persistence <laughs> <laughs> and his strong hands. Um, yeah, so welcome, Robbie. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. <laughs> My first ever uh, live live uh, podcast, well, first podcast of any kind, actually. Mine too, to be honest. Yeah, um, didn't imagine that we're gonna be there, but we're here. <laughs> uh, good. I'm Ben. Um, ben uh, Techno Team. Ben, ben from Techno <laughs> Team. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> own it, own it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. We're all Techno Team already. We've been stamped by the team. And um, yeah, we decided to sit down and talk about some uh, issues that could be interesting for the audience of Techno Team or maybe to just audiences in general that want to know something about, uh, um, yeah, about our, I hate to say it, but our scene. I don't like that word for several reasons, but. Why uh, don't you like that word? Um, because you just get so many different uh, reactions to it and so many, uh, I think, m misspelling or misusing it. Uh, uh, so you just don't you want you don't want to use it anymore. You want to just say you want to peop put people in in uh, one group, but uh, there are so many different people in that c kind of group. So it'd be too specific to define them by the scene. Maybe the scene was something where actors uh, were uh, chilling together or something, and it became the scene. You <laughs> know, a bohemic uh, kind of uh, group that being seen by other people. I don't know. Yeah, but I'm going too far into the. Um, weed <laughs> uh good so uh robbie tell me uh, something about your name first uh, everybody knows you on social media as uh life by kaizen or kaizen or captain techno or major <laughs> techno or uh, <laughs> uh yeah tell me about the origin or how did you come up with that name i mean most people when they see me uh, say wait you're that guy that guy so this is the uh, this is the other one I hear as much as Captain Techno or Kaizen Kaizen. <laughs> um, what was the question? Where did the name come from? Yeah, how do you come up? What is Kaizen? Who is Kaizen? See, this, I mean, this was my my first Instagram handle from when I first made Instagram in I guess 2015. I was a a late joiner. I was more using Facebook at the time, and Kaizen at, at the time was something I was applying to my my training. I used to be into very high level uh powerlifting and bodybuilding combat at some point and uh, for me it was just this uh the, the word kaizen is japanese and mm -hmm. it's uh basically means continual non-stop development um that's what it means basically, basically wow. agile you know wow and actually this 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 uh this word now to me has a different meaning to what it what it did then before it was about sacrifice and about an obsession mainly with physical training you know this was my real catharsis and where i got my sense of growth and accomplishment from generally speaking uh, but now obviously like yes i still look after my body and, and i'm in very good shape you know but this is not this is not a goal of my life and i'm in great shape because i love myself not because i hate myself which is where i think a lot of the egos come from that are end up as guys obsessed with being mm -hmm. the biggest baddest motherfucker they can appear as <laughs> you know what i mean yeah um and now it's about still about continual non-stop development but what, what I sounds found, german as well i must say or yeah, or, I mean, or I dutch mean, i mean yeah, I, I mean i mean i mean well yeah i mean now for me it's about emotional development and about personal growth and about being the best most expressed kindest person that i can be you know relative to who i am nice um but I don't think uh, a German would use it in that way. <laughs> no, probably not. Probably not. Yeah, cool, man. I uh, I think it's your brand. I think uh, it seems to have become that, you know, yeah. because um, yeah, some people some people know know my name's Rob. Some people don't. Um, more people will recognize my yeah me from social media than the maybe than having had me introduce myself to them, you know um but yeah i like it i mean it's a nice it's a nice it's a nice identity uh nice ni nice uh phrase to be associated with and it's something that i i guess i feel i still embody otherwise i would have changed the name to captain techno <laughs> <laughs> 
Or Techno Viking 2.0. Techno Viking, Millennial Techno Viking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> genau, genau. Nice. But I think Rob fits you as well, uh, as, as, uh, as minimum as Kaizen. So I think it's nice to, if, if uh, anybody who knows you and uh, sees you as both Kaizen and Rob, uh, as really, I don't know, I can say from my perspective, that's the real whole picture. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Well, I mean, I mean, like Rob is the whole picture, actually. But most people don't know the whole picture. Most people just know this slither of it, you know. And this slither of it is no less me than the rest of it. It's just the part that is blah, you know, that, that no one can no one can avoid if they're anywhere near it because it's so fucking big and loud, you know. <laughs> um, but there's the other sliver, which is which no one sees apart from me. You know, mm. because it that's that, that's what allows me to be here is because I have here to recharge. You know, nice. Um, but yeah, for sure, like uh, it's 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 I I enjoy I enjoy the the adoration uh, that this this slither of me gets. You know, um, but uh, yeah, there's there's a lot going on beneath the uh, beneath the hood. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> that's uh, yeah, but we we know it. We know it. Um, I think there's a lot of reflection in what you do and how you think from what I know you. Yeah, I think there's a lot of reflection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, man. Um, I'm for you. Huh? I'm for you, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just shortly about your childhood. So it's our first episode. Straight in, uh, straight, straight, in, in straight, straight, straight in from yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. if we're going deep into the Kaizen and deep into the Rob, so that's... You uh, said it was going to be just a tip. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Uh, so everybody who knows you knows that you're from Britain and uh, where exactly from? How was the Souls? Souls, something with Souls. Um, so my hometown is Saint Albans. Saint Saint, 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 Saint Albans. Saint it's Albans. actually the last, the last Roman town. Um, wow. And... Uh, yeah, well, I say it's just a city actually, because as a cathedral, that's the criteria to be a city in the UK. Um, very near to London, like you're in central London, twenty minutes, so it's very much like a commuter town. Nice schools, uh, pretty secure, like nothing really interesting going on generally, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I lived there till I was twenty uh, before I went to uh, went to study and left it, left the city for my first time. Where did you go to? I lived for three years uh, on the south coast in Sa Southampton. Southampton, okay. Southampton, bigger city. Um, and how would you describe Southampton? <laughs> um, qu yeah, uh, quick synopsis: uh, a pretty shitty coastal city, nice. which had two big universities put in it, so a big influx of students and student money. So you've got a very um, exciting inverted commas to a student or young, like you know young person who wants to ha live a uh, regular capitalist life you know um but if you go for two miles in any direction from city center it's pretty trashy derelict council estates um really like yeah like all, all the indicators of, of uh society is not great here like on a on a on, a, on data points uh, are not looking good you know for how would you scale southampton from one to blackpool <laughs> i haven't been to blackpool so i can't i okay, can't i'm just I kidding uh, but but i'm just kidding yeah yeah closer to blackpool than berlin <laughs> yeah <laughs> cool <laughs> so and you did you move at some point to london or you lived I, in south so all my family lives in london okay. uh, apart from my dad who lives on the south coast uh, okay. uh, where where uh, uh where he was born um and um yeah like i was in london for my whole adult life uh after after uh Moving back, so after dropping out of uni uh, in Southampton, uh, the classical one, for, I would know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you know the illicit backdrop, like not not for TikTok viewers today. Yeah, um, kids, <laughs> kids, don't maybe, do that at home. Next time when we do a, a paid, don't a paid, do that at uh, home, kids. <laughs> <laughs> paid subscription. Yeah, uh, only fans. <laughs> only fans. We apply universities. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, went to, went back to study after like learning. I actually um, wanna want to get a degree rather than uh let my illicit life choices take me uh in a different direction um and uh yeah then work, worked and lived in london before moving here uh in yeah february 2018 february 2018 2018 magical year 
Why? <laughs> why? 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 I'm just kidding. We uh, for for us it was also like the big boom of uh, of rave culture in uh, Berlin. Probably the last big boom before uh, Corona. Mm, what, 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 because I ar- I arrived. No, well, of course, because you arrived first uh, and so you brought the energy. And uh, yeah, Mark and I started li- like really... Not, not, not ever, I mean, at, f- at first, my, my energy needed a lot of adjusting, you know. I haven't always been what I am now in a party, you know. Yeah, um, where, where did you uh, used to go in London? So when I was in the UK, I was partying. Um, like, <laughs> it, it's a very different approach, like, because uh, where... Uh, the lifestyle is very different, you know, and mm. you don't have the same freedom to, uh, to, um, enjoy your life without, without, without stigma and without being able to, without, without having to like somehow play catch up, you know? And, uh, so the parties were much less frequent. And of course, UK parties finish at 6am, you know? Mm. So the culture is to just be where we actually wake up. Really? Um, I mean, I mean our like, second soul. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, well, like when 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 I first when I first came to my first Berlin Berlin rave, I guess at City Force. Uh, this is yeah, like February February twenty eighteen. Um, <laughs> used to be our favorite club at the beginning as well. I haven't been since. Like, uh, <laughs> not not because I didn't like it. You understand? Like, like, like. I mean, yeah, okay, there are reasons for that. But ben, so as usual, when we talk, uh, we're now getting lots of open tabs, um, which we're gonna have to like try and circle back to. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe make notes if you like. If you're if we're missing some content you wanted to cover, because no, all good, all good. <laughs> I think I think it's getting exactly where it's okay, supposed okay, to be okay. getting. Let, let, let's just be spontaneous. then. Um, yeah. Uh, 2018, I, you came from London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're talking about Sissy Force. Actually. Yeah, it's Sissy. Let's yeah, go for Sissy Force. Being careful. <laughs> okay, this tab is uh, closing in uh, five minutes. Max. Max. Okay. Let's okay. go. <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's not so much about Sissy Force, but more about my adjustment. Because, like, yeah. um, I when I well, so when I was in the UK, we can come back to this uh, if we need to. Like, uh, I was going to drum and bass raves, drum and bass, uh, grime, like. High BPMs and techno, more aggressive, um, and the ravey uh, community in England is a, bit, a little bit harder than the German, right? Or <sighs> no, you can't. You can't define well. it by hard. It, it, and, it, it, no, no. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, because look, like people are people, and people party to express themselves and to get out emotion. In some, in some ways, healthier than others. Obviously, in Berlin, it's like, uh, well, in my opinion, this is another fucking tab. <laughs> Excuse my French. Uh, we have have like um, like so. In my opinion, partying healthily is when your life is aligned with your principles, who you are. You're productive. You're fulfilled. You're you're taking self care. And a party is a celebration of that. When you meet, and then you can meet people and connect when you're at your best possible version of yourself. Right. Nice. This beautifully me, said. Thank you. And and this is what this is what I do. This is what I live in. This is what I I I uh, try to encourage. You know, mm. because. Lots of people, including friends of mine, um, I mean, less so as time goes on, and I, I build deeper, more meaningful bonds with people who I align with better. But um, definitely, I, I have people who are, who, are, who are friends of mine in, in my community, in my network, who are partying in a very, I consider, unhealthy or toxic way, you know? Okay. And these are people who are partying because they can't bear to not. Yeah, no. there's party as uh, escapism and there's partying as, as celebration as, of life. As, as, as I, I am not enjoying my life, I don't know how or don't have currently the courage or energy to do something about it. So I'm just going to do the default thing, get fucked out my mind at the weekend and keep pushing it because I don't want to go back to reality. You know, party for days and days and days and days and then crash into self-pity and then oh, I want to feel better. I'm going to party, you know? Maybe that's a phase in partying as well. Uh, discovering, I uh, mean, me talking out of my experience, yeah. Um, experiencing the rave or the um, world of electronic music as, as an escape. And then going through that ring of fire. And then deciding, hey, I want to do this uh, when I'm good. I don't want to do this anymore when I'm bad. And I'm like down and searching for the dirt. It's you know? it's a process, you know, mm. and um, sometimes uh, sometimes uh, people can observe and be inspired by someone having uh, let, let's let's say let's say balance, you know. Um, uh, but often uh, people need to learn that lesson themselves, you know. Mm. Um, and 
you know, may, maybe they find a way to, to, to kind of get through their shit and then yeah. experience a party where they're feeling good. But oh, actually, how I, how I feel when I party, what I get from it and, 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 and how I feel in the days after is, is actually very dependent on where I am in my life right now. You know, mm. and uh, so am I too far from the mic? No, no, we're good. We're good. Yeah, we're good. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I like uh, I, I like. Ben, you're going to have to help me get back to one of the previous tabs yeah, now so because just jump jump back to Britain. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> How was London? Um, so, when I when I when I first got into raving, you know, because. Prior to say age 20, my experience of partying, inverted commas, was the typical bullshit of pop music, wearing jeans and loafers and a fucking polo shirt. Um, or a white and, collar shirt. And literally like uh, 90, 99% of the girls there are wearing whatever, well, like, like you could say high heels and dress vibe you know yeah. nothing wrong with this yeah and then the guys you could there, recognize the brands like and then and then uh, the guys <laughs> there the guys there are just yeah the, w w it's like it's like it's like a uniform you know like yeah. we, were, we were talking about mykonos vibes earlier like, absolutely and uh yeah just shitty pop music and just trying to get laid <laughs> um and not that, that far from uh, today's raves that's not fair that's not fair think about it uh, I, well, they're not ra not raves I go to, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, you're like, <laughs> like <laughs> listen, please tell listen. me where these pop music is trying to get laid raves are. I'm gonna try okay, one. Okay, okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna define. <laughs> there is a uh, if you just if you define those parties by wearing a uniform and wanting to get laid, it does define a lot of parties that we're familiar with today. Fair, fair, fair. Touche. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah, but uh, I totally get that vibe. But I, uh, also, okay, in the same film parties we time. try and avoid. Parties we try and avoid. Yes, you know. At um, the end, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so I, I my my introduction to partying came at the same time as introduction to harder drugs than weed. You know, um, and uh, kids hold your ears. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was that, well, yeah, okay. So when I say drugs, I meant something else. <laughs> Is that is that kid friendly? Bananas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bananas. bananas is friendly. Nice bananas. <laughs> nice bananas. Um, How much you got for me? <laughs> yeah, don't slip on that. Don't Did they found like something in bananas like a couple of years ago in Berlin in the Aldi? They found like a ton of, so of something a in ton, bananas. A, a ton, ton of something in bananas. A ton of something. Mm. Mm, mm. Of bananas in bananas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Best um, kind. Best kind. <laughs> um, Okay, so trashy vibes reminds yeah, me somehow yeah, yeah. of my, so, my Berlin two thousand and so eight, nine, ten. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, so actually, actually, uh, yeah, we're similar age. So th this was like two thousand nine, two thousand nine, um, and um, the first parties, the first raves I was going to were yeah, finishing at six a.m. You know, mm -hmm. um, and and when I first started eating bananas for the first time. Uh, we 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 would um, we would be like like uh, British rave culture is uh, binging, you know, mm. and uh, it was a very uh, aggressive approach to party. Binging is nice. Binging, binging. Is binging. Yeah. Uh, but well, th 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 this is this is how Brits drink. It's what we're known for. Mm. Oh, I say we. It made me cringe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel British. Um, I'm no? British by passport, but like uh. every stereotype um, that is held about like alcohol or football fan you know like, like just or ch getting drunk in groups and chanting that's a good one <laughs> chanting. <laughs> uh, it's, it's nice. like it's like it's even worse than whooping in a rave you know <laughs> whoop and no, i don't whoop i only whistle i'm, the, I'm that guy um, if you didn't know i'm the whistling guy you're the whistling guy yes even if it's Give not me, appropriate uh, sh show me a whistle no, no, no! It's gonna, it's gonna terrify the people at home. No, I'm just kidding. It's gonna break. I'm already their ears. terrified. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll hear it uh, the next weekend. Oh, okay, okay. You'll okay, hear on it the probably. door. Yeah, on the door. <laughs> Out. <laughs> uh, hey, come to the front. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that how is it called? Whistleblowing or cat, cat, cat whistling? Cat calling. Yeah, cat whistling. <laughs> I, I, I'll be, I'll be checking vibes. You'll be checking joppers. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ich glaube, wir bedeutet äh, Arsch auf. Äh, <lacht> so, ja. so, yeah, so, um, my first party I'll go into, all drum and bass raves. Um, I, I grew up on drum and bass, actually. Uh, drum and bass and hip-hop when I was a teenager, on my go-to, and a bit of a bit of garage, of course. So Solid Crew when they first came out. Legendary and, like, uh, early early grime stuff. Uh, before that, that got big. Um, but, yeah, in terms of party, it was all, it was all drum and bass. Um, and, uh, yeah, like... I didn't dance then like I dance now. It wasn't dancing, it was, we used to say skanking. Skanking, yeah? The music is super energy, and I, 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 I moved my body with the same energy as you see me dance now, but without the sexy hips, without the coordination, you know, with, without, without the, the artisticness of it, still with the same, like, <laughs> let's say crowd control, you know? Yeah, with a bit of skankiness in you. <laughs> Um, but yeah, totally, di totally different vibe. Um, uh, like um, it's yeah, just like, jump, jumping around, like high energy. It's just enjoying yeah. the, also the t testosterone. Always with a group of guys, you know, my group, my, my friends. So, so be uh, listening more to techno right now for you is uh, is a taking a step uh, back a little bit from BPM. Well, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> somehow, lowering it down somehow, a little although, bit. Although, although, shout to Ola, I now love trance. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, like actually, like I had to reprogram myself. Uh, I didn't realize it was happening. It happened gradually over time. Um, like the first step was going back to the tab, the other tab from mm -hmm. the, from, the, the, from Sissy Force. Um, yeah, like I I had uh, I had you know come to this party with a friend who then left, and and I was just like, well, and, and normally, like my in my history, we're going to parties. I'd always go with. A group of people normally mm -hmm. and like my friend leaving the party me staying alone unheard of but i was just like well actually why should i leave normally i just leave when the party ends with all my friends but this party is quite clearly <laughs> not in it not leaving anytime not finishing anytime soon <laughs> um actually I'll, i'm gonna stay yeah see you later right? yeah and then for the first time i was like alone in a berlin party uh it was 8 a.m so i'm already two hours on borrowed time you know mm -hmm. I, i've eaten all, by, all eaten all my bananas at this point you know um, and I'm like, okay, so, so now, now what, you know, people are still arriving, people are still arriving to, um, uh, to this party. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm out of energy, out of bananas. What do I do now? You know? And I was like, okay, actually people are, people are. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened? Pe then? Um, people, people are still arriving. People are still arriving. I'm like, okay. Like actually like this is. A different attitude it's a different outlook to my my experience of party so far it's a different pace of music uh people are acting differently because they're not in a rush they don't have a time limit you know mm -hmm. and actually you can feel it the anxiety that pervades london and <laughs> most western capitals as a society also of course pervades the night scene the party scene you know mm. um whereas as i was very quickly learning in berlin people are not in a rush here you know people are not in a rush people i are... wish they would have been just a little bit more just a little who, bit who, who and why um do i am i, am I allowed to say germans in, in general you wish or? they were in a rush uh, we yeah I, i miss a little bit of the rush just a little bit sometimes they are when they need to be mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Hashtag Blitzkrieg. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 well, yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean. You're, and you're raising your eyebrows about bananas. <laughs> <laughs> do, do we have a Jewish filter like in the in TikTok to allow me to say that? I thought you were the rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my beard is my yeah, filter. My beard is my filter. <laughs> Remind me not to put my fingers in that. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I have to remind you not to put your fingers in that? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, okay. you quit for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, well, your first club in Berlin was uh, Sisyphus? <clears throat> so, actually, actually, it was my second. My first was on the day I arrived. Uh, I went to... Uh, chalet which is now eve uh next sweden owned, uh, it was attached to actually I yeah believe, i believe um <laughs> and uh yeah yeah this this was uh 
for a couple of hours. It was like my, it was, like I said, it wasn't really a full experience. It was just kind of a friend of mine had a guest list and I went in and kind of was like, okay, this is actually a very different vibe to the UK, but I didn't really uh, engage properly. My first, like, I would say a proper experience was this, this Sisyphus, like um, a couple weeks later. Mm -hmm. Hello, Shan. Hello, Shan. <laughs> Yeah, tell you, you'll be all. <laughs> Sorry, that's happening. We're live, we're live. Yeah, yeah totally live. Um, um, yeah, well, um, where were we? I got confused. Uh, we, you were asking, uh, yeah, so we're talking about this, this, this experience with Sissy Force. Like, so this, yeah, this, this was like the first kind of realization of, okay, actually, um, I don't have to party with a rush. I don't have to, I don't have to uh, leave at a certain time. I can come and leave when I'm finished. Okay, let me settle in properly and see what see what this is all about, really. You know, mm. because in the UK, I wasn't networking or connecting with people like I do now. I was still causing a scene and still being an anecdote for many people in that party. You know what I mean? But I wasn't like now when I now when I party, like my heart is so open, like I'm so expressed. And if I meet someone else who's also with an open heart and also expressed, we can bond super deep, super quick, you know? And I never had this in the UK, maybe in festivals actually, but that's another topic because a festival is a timeless experience to an extent, yes. you know, it's the same. You're more committed when you're there, so you can probably lose this rush better than you would lose it in a while partying in the city because you always, I, again, I say it for myself, I always feel the next day while, not, while I'm partying. It's very hard you, to say again, say again. I always feel or think about the next day and you're always, the clock is always ticking backwards when you're in a rave in the city, but if you're in a festival, the clock is not ticking. I mean, what you mean when you when you say thing about the next day, you mean in terms of commitments, or you mean like 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 having yeah. having this? Yeah. When am I going home? Of course, sometimes you take like three, four days free, maybe, and and you don't think about the next day. But as, as long as you're like celebrating in the city again, it's only it's my personal experience. I was literally I'm, about to say, speak for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, mean, you, you I, I wish tabs, maybe I wish you've got myself. Too many tabs open. Yeah. yeah. I wish I could uh, uh, teach myself to to really. Where's my water sorry, boy? lose the clock but uh, there are special bananas for that so <laughs> <laughs> subscribe <laughs> <laughs> good so um let's just go uh forward uh <laughs> with that debate number that two <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> Um, so, so we, you basically already, <laughs> already compared that was like, you answered everything uh, without me even asking. Um, classic. yeah, classic, <laughs> uh, the comparison, <laughs> like I would understand how, how you feel about uh, a comparison between the, the, the British scene and the, and the German scene. You kind of, uh, just suggested well, it right now. I didn't, I didn't, no? um, because like my experience in London was not in a techno scene, you know, yeah. it was in, it was in drum bass scene, which I fucking love i grew up on drum and bass and like super nice I, I, like there there is an element of that energy that i miss but i couldn't enjoy a drum and bass rave as i used to yeah. because there's too many people that for me now are toxic to my my my, my energy you know yeah and um, sometimes it's not about uh not going to some parties because you don't like the music that we love hip-hop we love a lot of oh uh, yeah hip-hop's a good example grime yeah. grime is what i i love grime i listen yeah. to grime like i listen to grime a but, lot more than you'd expect for for, for someone so yeah. someone so like <laughs> let's say comfortable around uh um all all types of gender sexual orientation yeah, yeah. these these is like this is coming from roots of like very homophobic toxic male aggressive you know yes but i, lo I love it i love the music yeah. you know you can and you can deny the art yeah well I, well some people can you know um yeah, like yeah. For, for I mean, the, yeah um art is undeniable art is undeniable if it's art if it's, art, it's if it's i mean but art is subjective also yeah so it's not so so you, if it's art how like art, that that's also a undeniable <laughs> you cannot deny it <laughs> <laughs> it's in the in the eyes of the observer okay wait okay okay i'm, okay. I'm just kidding okay no 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 because if i say this this is art 
And you say, no, it's not. I if can just say, well... If you created it, and if it was... If, your, I, if, I, if I created if it... If you created it, then maybe you can call your uh, art then. Yeah. Your, uh, so, so the definition of art... <laughs> no, I'm just... The defini- <laughs> no, if, you, if you created it, yeah. No, no, the definition of art is something that you create for yourself that others then start to appreciate, you know? You think? You think that's... Uh, so, so this, like, who made this for a start? Uh, probably a German. Um, probably a German. Uh, I mean, you can't. <laughs> <It's like laughs> it looks like a series of, uh, of of cups, like from a German company, I would say. Okay, okay. Not yeah. IKEA. Yeah. No. <laughs> we get, we get, we're, we're digressing. We're digressing. Um, so England, Germany, you could not compare because uh, because you haven't been so uh, deep so, uh, listening into English, British <sighs> techno, or so. Uh, so um, I've only been to one techno party mm. in the UK. Where? Um, it was <laughs> it was actually um, quite recently, relatively. Uh, it was it was to see Ola uh, play. Um, Where? Uh, I couldn't tell you the venue. It was at a random like. Uh, I think I remember that gig. I think I remember that gig, and I think I know that place, and I think it's a real. Place. It was. It was. It was. It was it's pretty, pretty underground. It was, yeah, it was yeah. like yeah, ne- next to like a football field in what like East London, deep in East London. I forgot what it was called. Yeah. And uh, and you yeah. liked it? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I enjoyed it. I like. I I enjoy like, but obviously at this point, it's like the connection I have with Ola and be be like being being randomly in the UK as her at the same time. And coming to see her in a place I'd never been in East London, emotions were already high. Like you know, like had I gone there, uh, I, had I gone there out of context, um, like and compared it to a Berlin party, it's not, it's not a comparison, yeah. you know. Um, I must ask if you were recognised at that party. Um, it would be funny because it's your first, like, like your comeback to England, you your first what? techno party. Then it's, it's sometimes it's hard to tell, and this has been an ego trip for me mm. because wherever I go. Mm. whether it's i mean techno party is obviously the most but generally generally wherever i go whether it's in berlin on holiday with my parents whatever people stare at me and sometimes i'm like oh god like they're gonna like you know whatever like they they, they know me from instagram you know uh-huh. and 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 then and then if, I, if i'm wearing if I'm wearing sunglasses and they, they they can't tell that i'm observing them observing me mm. i see like you know two people nudging whispering each other looking at their phone and pointing at me like it's him, it's him. This kind of shit, right? And 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 then and that, sounds that, amazing. That, that that's that's kind of cute, yeah. Yeah, it's cute. Um, but then I see someone staring at me, and maybe just staring at me because of my appearance. Yeah. You know? Um. So, I've I've tried and I've tried to just not judge the situation because no. it doesn't like. So people, yeah. The okay. The answer is people were noticing me. <laughs> if they recognise me, I don't know. Um, yeah. Techno party with Ola, probably, probably. You know, I could say just in general about people that are um, very aware of their avatar, they are being noticed, you know, and people uh, seem to stare or just put their attention on them. You, I think you're a person very aware of its avatar, you know, and you're, think, and you're paying attention to it and you're uh, constructing it and uh, you're trying to maybe do it as you feel from the inside as well, you know, so it, so it matches your state. Not many, not many people do that. I mean... Like, Talking about uniforms. I, 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 uniforms. Yeah, because we said before, like parties with people with uniforms, you stand out <laughs> because you pay attention okay, to your avatar. Okay, I think. okay, okay, understand, understand. Um, I think rather than paying attention to it, it's more like I allow it to exist. Nice. You know. Nice. And like, because actually, I think very little now about my appearance because I have such a kind of composure about I am who I am, and I I can. I can appear this way today. I can appear today very straight Deutsch rap, you know. And tomorrow, I could wear a fucking skirt and crop top, yeah, and be still totally comfortable, you yeah. know. Um, but so for me, it's more of an energy than an appearance, you know. Yeah. And and when you when you feel so empowered and affirmed, you 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 people really notice that. And actually, the more unaffirmed and it, unempowered they are the more they get uncomfortable with that and that can either lead to inspiration and then obsession or arousal or resentment loads of loads of things and but now i'm digressing again that's another tab yeah that's nice yeah, yeah. that's nice <laughs> 
Like it. What's that pink drink, by the way? Uh, it's uh, fermented water. Uh, fermented, they're not, uh, fermented uh, unfortunately, water. they're not uh, sponsoring us, but it's like fermented water. They call it water kefir. And, um, Fetish champagne. Yeah. <laughs> it's, really, it's very fetishy to drink it because it's not really alcohol, but as Carol said, it smells like alcohol and almost feels like alcohol. I want to smell it. I want to smell it first. You can taste it if you want. Yeah, I want to smell it first, bro. <laughs> smell it first, please. Let me smell it before I taste it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Fermented water with peach from Coffee uh, Bar. Coffee Bar Kreuzberg. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Sh- shout out to Coffee Bar. It's th- it does smell like it it's kind of like better than here. kombucha. Did you ever taste kombucha? I like kombucha though. Who, whose is this? Is yours? Mine's. Uh, Carl's. Whatever's. It's pinky like. It's like kombucha, right? No, kombucha has more flavor. Yeah. This smells yeah. stronger than it tastes. Probably. I had that one before. It's still water. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that situation that you just described. <laughs> I, I didn't i didn't describe I it want, i, I didn't describe it i said the words and your mind took it to the gutter <laughs> you know <laughs> yes uh, welcome. Has <laughs> welcome to the gutter welcome to tough love welcome to tough where love where we yes, sometimes yes, exactly. uh, will do dirty jokes <laughs> i wasn't joking <laughs> <laughs> um i know i want some more of this huh? So funny that we, I, I must be honest, we are really going by this uh, schedule without uh, planning it because the next topic is like uh, your looks and uh, I just want to yeah, just talk about it a little, bit, um, a little bit more about this being aware of how you feel and how you dress it out and um, maybe also expressing some social criticism with it with uh, putting on elements, as you would say, that people will be shocked by or elements that get out of context like you say a rock we see a lot of rocks on on straight boys and uh, berkheim it's a it's a thing i like rock, it I oh, think. Skirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 skirts yeah just taking um um garments out of their uh usual frames or contexts yeah but do you follow that kind of uh you like to to break rules when you when you think about uh your appearance appearance or um so it's, it's funny to talk about context yeah. you know because i think that that context changes you know rapidly yeah and uh for me um seeing uh male appearing people um who are i would say stereotypically gay by appearance yeah. in terms of oh well it's a man wearing a wearing a skirt. He must be gay. This yeah. this kind of narrow ideal. Yeah. Um. It d- definitely became more commonplace for me to to, uh, like like because like regard regardless regardless of 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 uh, like because I I've never been I've never been homophobic. I've never well actually that's not true. I was when I was younger, but that's that's another story. Yeah. Um. But like since I've been in Berlin, I've been very welcoming and and curious about everyone. Um. So, but, but I would, in my earlier time here, I would still have an assumption about, ah, my friend so-and-so is gay. Um, Not because I ever had any evidence for that or they told me that, but because, oh, he wears girls clothes, Mm. you know? Mm. And (laughs) when seeing, oh, actually he's not gay, but in fact, he's, he's actually very, very straight, (laughs) but he's also wearing girls clothes. Well, that's something I need to process, you know? Uh And definitely kind of felt open to 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 the uh, possibility of expression, you know. And I definitely played on at, at the start, you know. Like obviously, I'm tremendously muscular, you know. And having this uh, with a skinhead tattoos, I've already got quite an extreme appearance, an extreme, very masculine testosterone appearance, right? And at first, it was very easy to create a very like uh, ultra like masculine like like uh, whatever, whatever identity, you know, like wearing like harness you know like or or like big chains and stuff like this you know which i've really enjoyed um but also as my dancing has developed from this just explosion of pent-up energy into i mean well you know you've seen Mm. (laughs) (laughs) we've seen this 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 is this is this is like something that as also as i've expressed learned to express myself physically um and seeing how much how much this does for me uh as a form of therapy as a form of connection as a form of celebration as a form of like 
well, I mean, yeah, da- dancing is everything to me, you know. Mm. Um, it's it's also opened me to express myself in in in, in more creative ways, like outside of a dance floor because I never considered myself a creative person. Hmm. Um, by nature, I'm not. By nature, I'm very pragmatic and logical. Um, I mean, and I would be, be have, this has kind of my, always been my way of thinking, you know, like not really deviating from the plan because I couldn't ever, I never had any kind of catalysts. Whereas now it's like, actually, the more creative I get in one aspect of my life, the more like ideas I have popping up in the others, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. And um, this has been with like uh, like uh, fashion as well. Yeah, sure. And uh, um, I have, I have uh, like, yeah, I've, I've lost my train of thought. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, so. That, that, was, that, was a long, that was a long paragraph. <laughs> it was a good one. It was a good one. I, uh, I'd love to hear like uh, your, your point of view of, uh, of again, I see it as uh, as an avatar, but with time, if you do it right, it's not an avatar anymore. It's really like the just uh, a mirror to your uh, inner. Why, uh, why are you using the word avatar? Um, I think it's just a good metaphor for being uh, sometimes uh, um, aware outside of your body. Do okay. Is there is there by this context a difference between you? And your avatar. I think in an ideal situation, the avatar should be a good um, embodiment of your inner world. Whoa. <laughs> I. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 my avatar is way off in this case. Yeah. You know, because my avatar is like. Do you think so? My inner world is is not. Like, ah, oh, fuck. So my yeah. my inner world is is as wild as that, but it's not it's not as public for a start. Yeah. Um, Just saying it, in terms of mixes and elements and uh, my, re- my, references. And I mean, my inner world doesn't have it as easy as as Captain Techno. I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm I, like the Captain Techno has it easy. Yeah. Right? In ter- in terms of in terms of like, okay, also not easy. Also. Um, so this is coming down to tough love again, classic. Like, uh, I like <laughs> when I'm when I'm when I'm when I'm. Let's say, wait, wait, wait. So is Captain Techno my avatar? Yeah, you know, in this case. Let's say so. Okay, okay. So when I'm my avatar, you know, <laughs> <laughs> when I'm my avatar, like, I I just I just put my foot on the accelerator. Mm. You know, this is me really me you know going for it yeah and now like because when i'm going for it there's like a lot of say okay say these are people uh opportunities and um leeches Mm -hmm. coming at me like trying to hit me on the tip you know when i say so so i'm 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 I'm, I'm like this they're trying to they're trying to get here yeah and now now i'm empowered enough to understand more and more with time where my boundaries are um, I can see it coming more and more now of, okay, like, I don't want to, I don't want to slow down or change direction right now because mm-hmm. I'm my avatar, you know? And when we meet at this intersection, you're either going to come with me or you're going to bounce off me, you know? So, the, so yeah, I get I, it. I, I get it. Or, or, you know? I get it. I get it. It's nice. And, and this, this is, this juggernaut. You're like okay 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 so so it's like when <laughs> you know what i mean yeah well yeah i mean so actually that's like this this like also you know that x-men Mark? the vinnie jones vinnie jones in the, yeah, yeah yeah with the, yeah. With the duh, duh, duh. Mm. really this, this this is this is like metaphorical as well I'm, to, I'm i'm not just talking about like pace of partying for example for those um you know uh yeah. for um oh, I forgot what was the phrase those uh Uniforms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kicking out U- uniforms, uniforms with uniforms. the momentum of the avatar. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, 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 like, th- th- this could be about depth of conversation. It could be about um, authenticity of, 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 um, of, of interaction. It could <laughs> be about, um, I love this person and I know they love me, but, but are they too insecure right now to have an authentic conversation with me? Mm. Which is also an issue as well. 
Wait, and that's, that's real tough love, you know? That's tough love for me. Yeah. That's, that's, that's tough love. Anyway. What's happening when you're not uh, accelerating in your avatar? Um, when I'm not accelerating... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the round girl. Uh, where's my tea, actually? <laughs> <laughs> Bits of shun. <laughs> Mine hurts. Cup of tea. Du bist die Beste. Und uh, willst du auch ein... Uh, ja, bitte. Ein Dribble? <laughs> ein Dribble. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah so, when you're not pushing it. When you're not so, pushing it. So, so this, is, this is like also why I'm so selective about when I party as well, you know, because okay. now um, with the abundance of offers for exciting parties, um, I, I, I can't do them all, you know? Mm. I... Uh, yeah, yeah, put it on my face. <laughs> Um, I can't can't do them all. Um, I I have to I have to be uh, very very picky, you know. Um, otherwise, it's not fun anymore. Yeah. So um, I what was the question? <laughs> um, you're taking uh, it uh, down a bit with the acceleration of your avatar. I mean, uh, putting yeah. off masks. Yeah. Or... yeah, yeah, yeah. So 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 if I if I if I'm um, uh, if I'm choosing to go to a certain party on a certain day is because I'm feeling energized and excited and like I want a party. Mm -hmm. uh, because if I'm not feeling in that mood, then when people are coming into my space, mm -hmm. they're not bouncing off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, empowered enough for that space at that time to be able to draw harsh boundaries without it being taxing to me mm. and not enjoying it. So coming back to the, the, <laughs> the juggernaut, yeah. you know, actually like, um, th 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 this, is, this, is, this, is, this is me um, in, in this space of, okay, like when I don't feel like being 100 miles an hour in mm -hmm. the party, it, I'm not gonna enjoy this party anymore. Mm. Which again is good because thank you so much. Uh, it's, it's, it's super nice because it, it, it like enables me to uh, really gauge: um, Am I still enjoying my experience right now? Mm -hmm. Because I've told you about some very, very strange people, very traumatized people. I can say who have reacted to me in very unpleasant ways. You know, not not unpleasant as in you know I I've. I've, I've um, uh, considered myself a victim of something, you know, mm -hmm. um, but unpleasant just as in like, like having such an unhealthy obsession or um, expectation of me uh, and being needing my validation for some reason so much that the interaction is, as you can imagine, pretty awful, you know, yeah. and one, just one of these in a party environment is enough for me to be like, ugh. I don't, I don't even want to be around people now, which yeah. is why I'm also enjoying recently much more intimate, uh, intimate parties. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah, nice, super nice to you, bro. I just saw this uh, short video on uh, TikTok, I think, about mm -hmm. the secret club that uh, Johnny Depp, I think, had in uh, in Las Vegas or something, or yeah, Las Vegas or, or in LA. It was a club for celebrities, so they could, uh, you know, chill with each other, like Leo DiCaprio and uh, the Friends uh, cast. And then, like end of the night, he was I think it was the name was like Viper or something. Viper. Yeah, Viper. Yeah, Viper something like two words. And they were there to be, Viper you know, rooms. no Viper rooms or something. I mean, yeah. Viper rooms is a is a uh, from from one. Like I've seen I've seen techno DJs put there, so it's probably not this one. Yeah. No. I mean, no. I mean it's like a Viper is something. Mark, are you googling it? Thank you. Uh, uh, write Viper Johnny Depp. That sounds like okay. uh, like nineties, mid nineties. It was a place for all the celebrities of Hollywood and whatever to just uh, chill, um, being unwatched. The Viper Room. Yeah. So. The Viper Room. Yeah. So maybe what 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 you're aiming for at your position now in this uh, um, community or culture is uh, something like Viper Room for 200 uh, people where you just can be yourself and chill. When I'm, I mean, I mean, look, like it's it it's it's a, it's a mix of things, you know. Um, like I I actually 
like, <laughs> you know this thing, with great power comes great responsibility, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and um, like- Spider-Man. Yeah, <laughs> part, part, of, part of with, um, part of the, the um, context around, you know, my internal and external avatar, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, since I've been in Berlin, uh, I've been very focused on, well, I mean, it's a big part of my life, you know, personal development, trying to grow, trying to learn. And I have grown and learned a lot in my time here. But what happened in summer last year is all of a sudden I got super recognized, even famous, you know? Yeah. And it's a mathematical uh, um, uh, causality, I would say. I mean, it's a matter of time till a lot of people will get to know you. I mean, <sighs> It depends what get to know me means as well. Yeah, because, of, course, because, of course. Because like, you know, now I'm in a position where I no longer have the luxury of being able to work on myself in my own space and time. Mm. Because part of the challenges I'm having for my growth now uh, are not about insecurities or ego. It's about, it's about how do I enforce my boundaries with total strangers who are breaking them or even like, you know, people that consider me uh, uh, a good friend because we shared one really nice time at a party together and then I don't remember them and then they're, <laughs> they're super offended and actually really pissed off at me when I, when I see them. And I'm like, I, 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 like, I've been in a situation recently where I was like, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember you. And I said the words, I'm sorry, I don't remember you. And I was like, wait, why am I sorry? Why am I saying, like, like, yeah, am, am I, I, am I, I, like, I don't remember I, you would like, be enough normally like, like, if you like, saw like, each other why, one time. Why, like, 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 and, and I'm just in a situation where like, like these are my challenges, and like, and, and, or, or or people um, uh, just just having <laughs> such a such a big expectation of me because they they see they see the journey that I'm on from 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 you know the the, the, the top layer, and they and then they see and they see um, like it, <sighs> larger than life, like you know, friendly persona, yeah. you know, you might have, uh, they assume you might have more capacity. I'll give, than you, others. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. So I'm an extremely physical person in mm. every way, you know? Mm. Um, and of course, if I'm comfortable and connected with someone, I'll be physical with them. You know, it's how yeah. I show my affection. Yeah. And, um, I've had guys and girls, more guys than girls and not necessarily in a, in a sexual way, although I do get harassed by, um, by uh, more guys than, than girls, uh, physically. Um, I have to draw boundaries there a lot, um, eventually. <laughs> Sexually, or I mean... Well, so, uh... so this, this is what I'm saying. So, like, like I, like, I lo lo lots of guys will grope my, my bum um, uh, without consent, um, but I don't mind. I would... <laughs> is that a basketball thing most of the time or like a basketball a, thing yeah like hey good uh, uh, good job or it's like uh, testing mi how mix, mix or it's like I, I if mean, it's more than two what? seconds you know it's what? testing you know what it's like it's like it's like basketball with an element of do you like to play ball you know <laughs> uh, an invitation to a one on one uh, street ball I mean maybe more than one you know and, and well, one on two one on one on two it's so, a so back to back. All you years, <laughs> kids. But 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 like you know, like gem generally speaking, my boundaries are respected because like I I happen to be quite physically uh, uh, empowered, let's say, you yeah. know, and 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 I, I I'm not like, but but what was my point? So we're talking about um, what was the question, Ben? I lost us um, completely. We're talking. I lost us. I'm talking about physical, I'm very physical. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember. So um, I'll, I'll be, I'll be, uh, in, in the case I was referring to actually, yeah. like I, I'll be very intimately physical with people, but people that I'm platonic with, you know? Um, and uh, people observe that I am intimately physical with people that I have, that I'm close with. And, and then in their head, they're like, ah, oh, if I want to be close to him, I've got to be intimately physical. You'll be my friend now, they think. Fuck, yes, exactly. In this and, voice, and, and with this, this voice. This is, this is what I have to deal with as well now. People like that I, I are strangers to me hmm. who approach me as if they know me because they, they feel like they do after seeing my social media. Me being open <laughs> and seeing someone approaching me like they know me, I think, 
I probably know them and forgot them. And then I already imagine they're a fan of an Robbie. An intimate hug, tighter than I expected from a stranger, and I'm like, wait, hang on a minute. Like, where did we meet? Where you did know? we meet before? <laughs> you know? Do you know you know that song "Stand" by Eminem, right? Uh, <laughs> I imagine like a guy yeah, no, like no, dressing tick, dressing no. like Robbie already like writing him a letter you know like jumping from Hey 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 don't I I have I have I have uh, so 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 Alan uh, <laughs> my dear friend Alan shout out to you Zio. Uh, <laughs> just like, so yeah he he, uh, he 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 saw me in Bergheim or so he thought uh, he saw <laughs> <laughs> Alan got, got, it's got, you. Yeah, yeah yeah and came up to who thought it was me yeah like, and then turned the guy turns around it's like Oh, sorry. I thought you were my friend. You look just like him. The guy's like, "Oh, what? Life by Kaizen? Yeah, I model myself on him." A guy from Lithuania or Luxembourg or something. In Bergheim. In Bergheim. Um <laughs> And Alan's like, "That you know, that's that's like my best friend." Like, and then the guy's like, "You know, look, 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 you know this guy, blah 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 blah." Yeah, like so. You, I mean, you know our Lord and Savior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and for me, this is like, it was really novel at first, and now it's just like. I, I hope I don't run into this person because I, I have like, to just once remind that uh, uh, two persons, uh, a, a boy and a girl, <laughs> dressed up as you and Marlboro Ecstasy and uh, on Halloween in true, uh, true, Singapore true. or something. So, or so actually, actually, Miss Miss Philippines, like, yeah, Miss like Philippines. Shared, shared it like that, yeah, like I saw this <laughs> Miss Philippines shared those costumes because they she said those were the best costumes in Philippines Halloween that year, and I'm like. Are you yeah. being worshipped in the Philippines? Uh, so maybe they have like statues of you. Um, uh, take me to Manila. Take yeah. me to Manila. Take me to Manila <laughs> is the name of your uh, <laughs> first uh, yeah, episode. Hey, any any patrons in the Philippines want to sponsor a Techno Team video for <laughs> Captain Techno? Miss uh, Universe, hopefully. In, yeah, if Miss Universe wants to collab. <laughs> this, is a, this is a shout out to Miss Universe Philippines to invite us all as a team. So yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they were cute. They were cute. And any or any of her associates. It doesn't have to be you, Miss Philippines. And any, anyone, anyone in the Philippines. <laughs> anyone. <laughs> we're coming with a big uh, show. Yeah. So um, if we're at the Philippines. Um, no, I'm just kidding. No, no connection to Philippines. I thought about Thailand to be honest before asking you this. <laughs> um, Let's define the word queer because I have a f I have a funny definition for that in my head, but it's only very personal to me. I mean, to me, to me, uh, like it it now it now does have uh, an essence of um, gender and sexuality attached to it. I think, like, I'm careful about labeling myself queer. Uh, because I fundamentally am a white straight male. You know? Same, same so here. I'm, I'm humbled I'm, by I'm, you calling I'm, myself that way. I'm careful. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm careful about labeling myself queer. Um, and I, 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 I have uh, a friend uh, who I had a similar conversation with um, about a year and a half ago, um, and uh, um, they they are very very into the uh, the Flinter movement and the like queer queer uh, communities in Berlin, and um, I was asking I was asking them like am I queer, mm -hmm. and they're like definitely not definitely not you're, white, you're not allowed to be queer. You're, you're white straight male, so and, it's not coming into and, the group and, of and, queer and, and, and knowing like who she is and how how much I respect like her opinion on this topic I was yeah. like oh, okay okay I understand you know yeah and since then. Um, uh, <laughs> like I, I remember, I remember uh, Metaraf actually. Uh, we, we were uh, we, we 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 were coming into this party in Odessa, um, and in Odessa, Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we were we were the bells of the ball. You know, uh -huh. the party started Tsech, at Tsech or where was it? How what was the club? No, it wasn't a club. This was uh, an illegal <laughs> illegal rave we did. Uh, the best party of 2021. One one of definitely. Um, nice. Sphora X Drift. Uh -huh. In Odessa, uh -huh. um, daytime rave uh, in sorry sorry nighttime rave uh, in uh, industrial warehouse, daytime rave the open air after you know and it was Sphora did the warehouse and then drifted the open air. Was the one famous video from there? There's one famous. All no. the Red Beret famous initial videos are from there. The one the ones with Vaccina, uh, the uh, 
the what the the one with Alice in the background, uh, the one me Metaraf and uh, Raz uh, on the uh, podiums, uh, the one with me me and me and Ola starting to uh, Stanislav Tolkachev with JP playing in the background, the mm -hmm. one with me and the, like yeah, it was it was it was actually actually you know what I can say that was the day Captain Techno was born. So it indicates it was a pretty good party. Yeah, like I said, one of the best of 2021, if not the, like it was legendary, really, really. Nice. Um, and uh, yeah, like this, yeah, when we, me, me and Raf arrived late to the party um, and it was a super funny morning because uh, uh, the rest of the team, we were all staying in a big Airbnb, like the the, the drift team, it was, it was amazing. Uh, and uh, the rest had gone the night before. Raf wasn't playing until the following night and I wanted to get a bit more rest. So we stayed, the two of us, at the apartment and got a, got a taxi at like, you know, nine in the morning. You did an entrance. <laughs> well, 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 the funny thing was this, this uh, you know, this, this bolt, bolt driver, super elderly, you know, uh, 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 Odessan local guy, just picking up me and Metaraf. Uh, <laughs> like you can imagine, you can imagine his the reaction. Yeah. It just like, and, and the, the address being, uh, just this abandoned warehouse in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We were, uh, we were, uh, yeah, reaching the end. <laughs> um, and, so this, uh, uh, this guy picks you up, this old, uh, post-Soviet guy looks at your looks. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, just like, just like the whole, the whole journey, just like staring in the rear view mirror at us. Just like, just like, uh -huh. Are and they going to uh, murder me, each other? Who's going to murder who he thinks? Um, I mean, he'd have been lucky to be murdered by me and Raph. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Love you, math, math ref, baby. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, anyway, like, like I, 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 we, I got digressed talking about the, this this amazing day, but uh, uh, Raf sent Raf posted a, a story of us, and uh, all his fans was like, "Oh, like who's this? Who's this guy?" Mm. And um, I can't I can't remember the context what 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 led up to it, but um, uh, Raf was just like, oh, "Honey, you're you're the you're the queerest uh, queerest straight guy I've ever met." Yeah. And uh, I was just like, I was like, nice I, one. I thought I, I, I was just like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not queer. My friend said this. He was just like, he was just like, no, sorry, day, sorry, Raf. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I was just like, actually, no, this, this is, this is queer, and that gave me a totally different definition, mm. you know. And for me, queer now, like, so there needs to be a way to differentiate white cis male to white cis male who is not homophobic and not toxic and not you know mm -hmm. like actually like my ideals my values my sexual identity my like if you if you say are you straight i would say so far you know what i mean like not not because not because uh so far you know like just because i, like that. I haven't been sexually aroused by a male before yeah, doesn't mean it's, it's impossible still there. you know episode two people <laughs> Hashtag Hunter Schaefer, I would say. <laughs> I didn't get it. I'm just kidding. It's a very, it's a, it's a very famous model, which is, uh, uh, which could be confusing to a lot of uh, straight dudes. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, so to answer your question, yeah, the way I think, I think queer is uh, about uh, curiosity as well. Nice, you know? nice. I think I think that uh, I like that one. I think that I live a queer lifestyle because mm. it's breaking away from the ideals that I was given, mm. um, where I was. Mm. I'm doing I'm doing something alternative uh, to to be to be involved in a culture where I feel safe and expressed, mm. and I feel like my acceptance, my. Uh, lack of judgment my tolerance not tolerance, not even tolerance lack of, I like, it's no. not like i'm tolerating anything my lack of judgment actually my yeah. acceptance my acceptance um has led me to a community of outcasts mm -hmm. who are queer because mm -hmm. they are they are like what is queer is like away from the norm to me yes i think that this movement has a huge amount of yes like people who are identifying with a sexual or gender identity uh which is maybe not accepted where they're from or even acknowledged you know mm. and uh, i think that that's what often drives a lot of queer communities is this um 
safe space for LGBTQT plus I I plus mm. um, uh, people or people who are just not fitting into um, the the pigeonholes that they have the choice of where they're yeah. from. In. I somehow connect uh, directly the uh, the word queer with the German uh, word uh, quer, which just means um, basically going through different boundaries queer means just horizontally or or just going through borders you know and for me it these are how's it spelled sorry yeah just q u e r just like queer mm, with that one e, e less of queer okay queer. okay queer. and that's how actually they call queer people in german I, i'm guessing right queer uh it's sometimes doch doch queer doch 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 I've heard it from some old school uh, ravers. I wouldn't say names now, but uh, <laughs> it's not about Kvyadenka. are people like they're considered to be crazy because they just think like uh, uh, in terms of um, conspiracy theories mainly. These are Kvyadenka, but the word Kvya in German means going across or going like, I imagine it going horizontally across. So what, what I mean by that in terms of being queer is that I think a person is queer as soon as his soul or character or persona going through norms as you said mm. and combining different norms together to 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 one cocktail of a person and that makes him queer do you know you fucked up though you huh? said you said he so i'm so <laughs> sorry he she they, they them whatever they, yeah i'm still it, not no, it, i'm not it could be it it could be it it could be it it could be yeah. whatever it fucking yeah. wants i don't think we have to there we go there yeah, we i go. have i have <laughs> I I think um, I have a lot of uh, mixed opinions, mixed feelings about uh, about everything. Uh, I think pronouns have their space and place and everything. But I'm I'm myself. I'm a, I, I see myself as a as a queer person, not because of my sexual orientation or because of my uh, gender. I see myself as a queer person because I have so many uh, lines crossing between different. Uh, mm -hmm not beliefs, but mm, bases in me between my, my feminine and my, and my, and my masculine. Mm -hmm, and uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, I think that we can be queer on super different uh, measurements. You know what I mean? I mean, I think, I think also something that I'm just thinking now, um, like some people um, are born queer, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. I became queer. <laughs> what a sentence <laughs> i mean nice. i mean i mean so so some people are always you know having uh a struggle with their identity their their sexuality their feel, feeling like an outcast feel, feel, feeling feeling queer you know yeah so, some, somehow somehow queer you know? yeah outside of the for, box for me i i i was living the default you know <laughs> the default toxic life you know, let's say, let's say, um, before finding something in me that said no, and then getting more, more and more queer on this spectrum of, let's say, freedom, self-expression, yeah, you know, a liberation. Liberation is nice. So queer, queer is about liberation, also, you know. Nice, nice. I was. I, that, that's a good. <laughs> <laughs> Mark is like Mark couldn't care less about liberation. No, oh no, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, like, I mean, like, he's been holding up a piece of paper. We, so we, we can do know. one or two minutes more. Or are we? Yeah, you yeah. okay? Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. You good? I'm good. Because liberation just brought me into the next theme I'm seeing in front of my eyes, and that's Kiev, man. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna touch we need it. more we're than not. one or two minutes. Just a yeah, tip. Uh, just yeah, a tip. just a tip. Okay, just a okay, tip. okay. I mean, I mean. You you can't just say Kiev and let me and, yeah. and give me the microphone. You have to you yeah. have to. There, there's too of there's course. too many. No, and just now I found it nice that you said liberation in uh, Kiev. Yeah. I think it's on a way to. Yeah. It, w it was already on a highway to liberation since 2014. Oh yeah, uh, because of the things that happened in the world, and it it just I think the people there decided to push the gas on their avatar. You know. <laughs> and uh, something really nice developed out of that energy. There's levels to that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, something was uh, born or, or uh, just uh, being developed there since that year till till before the war, and it still exists. And something that uh, we have seen, observed, being uh, just a little bit part of, and uh, mm, 
Yeah, I just wanted to ask you when was your when was your first time uh, visiting that city? How did you come there? That's uh, that, that that's a good question and a nice a nice segue actually. Um, yeah. Just about, right, yeah, about, as you say, going going too deep into it in episode yeah, one. Exactly. Yeah. So um, Kiev was let's say on the agenda for some time for myself and and JP. Um, mm -hmm. We wanted to visit for a while and actually actually were uh, looking at booking tickets to go and see uh, uh, SPF DJ um, <laughs> uh, back in like April 2020. Um, we'd heard about this this uh, this mythical new you know the the, the Bergine of Kiev you know mm. uh, from Freddie K of course <laughs> uh, you know who else uh, the messenger uh, Freddie K my favorite <laughs> DJ legend um, and um, one of the prophets of Kiev uh i would I, i mean i mean certainly what took us there actually yeah, which yeah. is which is uh the, the ukrainians have a better name for that as than prophet uh how is prophet nick how would you how would you uh, a, conductor? <laughs> a, con a conductor yeah it's more like somebody who passes you through to something so provodnik is somebody who introduces you to something that you didn't know or uh, gets you into a new world yeah yeah provodnik uh i mean f i can say freddie k was my prophet into what's possible from a dj set nice <laughs> nice one um yeah definitely um uh so actually um you know it's funny we, we like JP and I were, were also uh, also looking with equal fervor uh, at uh, uh, Tbilisi, which is a city that you know still wanting to revisit. Um, Very similar uh, parallel universe. Well, I Georgia mean, like, I feel Ukraine. I feel like I mean I feel like until recently, where you know subjectively, but also objectively, Bergheim has gone downhill in many ways. Um, that uh, there was a there was a time, uh, you know, briefly where kind of Bergheim. Bassiani and K41 are kind of like the three pillars of real, you know, techno freedom the in temples. The, yeah, you know. Um, so, but obviously now, uh, you know, it's not maybe. Well, I mean, that's that's another conversation. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, we 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 were we um, were kind of waiting for you know the right the right lineup, and then all of a sudden, COVID happens. Um, JP actually went uh, on. Uh, New Year's Eve of 20 from 20, 19 to 20 2020 going into 21 uh -huh. so this was when COVID was was on um, I was unable to, to go because of I, I was in the UK and uh, the the travel situation was grim uh, at the time so uh, he went, went with um, went with went, went, out, went with a different uh, different group and um, did a bit of recon let's say I was like Rob like we're going back yeah, he came back from the mountain. We're going with, back. Uh, We're going back. So, the prophecy. Yeah, yeah, my brother did the recon, and then um, yeah, we went. Uh, I can say on mass at this point, um, uh, 20, 20 odd people from Berlin, uh, mainly decent techno DJs, you know, uh, which is I mean, we won't talk about drift yet, but uh, and it is like we've been friends with like you know, the, the Arcan October, these guys for for a while, you know, and they're a big part of this journey too at the time. And um, yeah, we went out there to see uh, Freddie K and Maron. There were two other artists playing. I forget who. Obviously, forgettable artists compared to Freddie K and Maron. Um, <laughs> and uh, this was like the first time I had experienced outside of of, of Berlin the freedom the Berlin parties have. Mm. I never felt that in the UK, for example. You mm. know? Which is why even the shit clubs in Berlin are still better than the anywhere good in clubs the UK. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and if you don't understand that, that's the reason they're shit. <laughs> <laughs> Tough love out of nowhere. <laughs> it, it was going to happen. It was going to happen. The, it was, uh, you, <laughs> you, you bitch slapped um, uh, most of the nice scene. But, uh, it's uniforms, uniforms. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I totally um, agree, but uh, but yeah, no, um, no. J joking aside, it was uh, it was remarkable. It was remarkable. Um, it was really interesting as well for me having this like 
environment so similar to Burgoyne, uh, with the, the the architecture, you know, it's done by all the same project managers as you know, and same mm-hmm. architect and blah blah blah. Um, and uh, yeah, then then uh, obviously yeah, like we'll leave the filler of drift for for another time. Yeah. Um, first but, visit, your first visit there. But yeah, we, we left. We left. We left on. Metaraf like, was playing. No, 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 no. Like uh, uh, Pre- 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 Freddie K was playing and Maron was playing. Maron, yeah, 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 How was yeah, Maron yeah. set? You remember that as well? I mean, the majority of people there, um, well, the majority of people there, the majority of people in my group who I was discussing the set with uh, were not impressed. Uh-huh. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it for the reasons they didn't like it, actually. It was um, only the ground floor working at that time. Yes. There was still not yes. the new one. So, yes. and exactly. the vibe was a little bit harder on the ground floor at that time as well. Wearing masks. Um, yes, I think, yeah. or, or maybe, or maybe, maybe that was, that was when we came back. Cause, cause actually, um, we, after, after, after this visit, you know, <laughs> there, there was a point where I was walking down the Kirillivska street, you know, uh, like red berry on jacket open with no shirt on, like just covered in rave juice. You know, with, with uh, the dri- pimp of Kirillovska Street, of juice, you know, <laughs> and uh, w- walking <laughs> walking with JP in, in silence, you know, just like really slowly, and got like these old trams going past. Mm. And I was I looked at him, I was like, bro, what the fuck is Kiev? Yeah, I missed that day. You know what? Yeah. What I know? missed that shit. And then and then that was when we decided that we wanted to come back, and you know, it was a thing, and uh, really, uh, when we came back for the next visit in May, which was for three weeks. JP, Ola and I, the sitcom vibes in a, a super nice apartment in the center. At this time, um, it was a it was a real toss up as to whether or not we were going to be able to party because the it, like there was like there were rumors about the, the, the when, when's the clubs reopening because Cape was closed at the time. Actually, for the first two weeks of that visit, it was closed and then it opened again with the masks like in May. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then by the time we came back in June, it was full belt. Yeah. June, the best uh, time of the world, June 21. That was, was when uh, you, you... Yeah, we were there. Yeah. <laughs> we were there also before and after, but June was before, legendary. After, June is was legendary for us. Backyard special. Uh, that party you mentioned in Odessa, uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff came out of it for you, um, uh, ritually or spiritually and or virally <laughs> as if and that's I, a third pillar richly yeah, spiritually yeah. virally <laughs> <laughs> and yeah that was a similar experience experience for that's us nice. uh, <laughs> seeing the backyard for the first time and oh, oh uh, okay okay plus one plus yeah, one yeah that moment i will never forget yeah no one does seeing the backyard first time it yeah. it pisses all over burgoyne burgoyne garden yeah like it kind of does you would not you would not believe you would not it is absolutely spectacular yeah yeah it, it's an unforgettable space and it, it was an a, a backup plan it was a backup plan of the real garden which is was supposed to be was supposed to be way bigger so sorry for teasing this but uh as soon as the war is fucking over yeah, i'm hard at teasing you think <laughs> I would love, I would maybe even before the war is over, who knows? You know, they, they did a party last week and I heard it was amazing. 700, 800 people, um, limited by time. Uh, they start at 12 and finish at uh, 9.45 or 8.45 in the evening. That's a very specific time. It's a very specific time because of curfew, but they still had the times of their lives i was i talked to two D- djs of the lineup the one opening and the one closing and they had both a beautiful experience and i find that to be the real win in that situation uh, celebrating life while being in that context as again i can only testify of myself or how i grew in israel if you um, if you don't celebrate life the day or the minute after you've been into the deepest sorrow you have lost so finally and not finally sorry for saying something like that but uh in this situation rave does really make sense mm-hmm. it makes mm-hmm. sense this they have a, the biggest reason in the world now to to rave you know 
and uh, this also explain why we are in Berlin are a little bit confused I guess because uh, everybody's searching for a reason to rave but this uh, it became something different something a little bit uh, more hedonistic than what they do now I don't think that what they do now is hedonism and I don't think it's even escapism I just think that they are celebrating life and the opportunity to have that uh, um, energy mm. you know and that's beautiful to me well put yeah Good. Хорошо. <laughs> Маки <laughs> <laughs> says uh, going forward. How are you feeling? Um, we 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 doing more. We doing more. How much? How much do we have? One hour twenty. One hour okay. twenty. Okay. So. What uh, what what were we going for time wise? I think uh, from one to two. So uh, if we do uh, maybe another minute, if we have another interesting theme or something. I'll take a look for a sec. <clears throat> yeah, check your themes, bro. Yeah, I don't want to go with too deep into material also. And uh, I, it was till now, it was super fun. I, I must be on super chilly and fun. Thank you for being your first. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm, I'm having time in my life. <laughs> we, you know, we, we, we've <laughs> been, we've been uh, uh, anticipating it. It was uh, really fun. I say, for Freud is the best Freud. <laughs> Huh? Freud is the best of Freud. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, you also spoke about some stuff that I, that I see here on my uh, last pages. Uh, Odessa, the party, first viral videos. When did you realize that you're, that you're like uh, viral or that you have maybe the potential to be, to be this uh, The day persona? after that fucking party. Really? It was insane. So basically, I'm, as you know, a social butterfly in these environments mm -hmm. well most environments to be fair um and every time i go to a party i will probably exchange instagram connections with 30 to 50 people i mean th this, this was this was then you know yeah um after this party um i turned on my instagram the next day and I had like 500 new followers out of nowhere. And I was like, what is this glitch on my phone? You know? mm -hmm. um, and uh, then um, uh, Alice, uh, who uh, was uh, was staying in the same uh, same uh, party Airbnb, <laughs> staff Airbnb, <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, just like, oh, Rob, check out this video. And she has, she's in this like Ukrainian telegram group for ravers. I don't know what it was, like just some huge group, loads of people. And the production engineer, Slavic Brois, shout out to you. Um, he had shared a video that he took, this video of me and Addis, you know, mm. in this group. And um, it was, oh, what's this guy's Instagram? Da, da, da. And then boom, 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 nice. um, and but, but, but all people from the Ukrainian party scene. Yeah. Um, and I get, I'm getting all these messages all of a sudden uh, in Russian. And I'm I'm having people commenting on my video in Russian all of a sudden. I'm just like, whoa, like, mm -hmm. what is this? And then a few days later, Techno Germany, yeah, uh, just like liked the video, yeah. Um, and I just sent it to them, and then they posted it straight away. Nice. And, and then nice. yeah, that was it. <laughs> that, 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 then it's been just one. I was kind of sure that you are of a Slavic uh, background when I saw you the first time. Do you think it could be maybe play a role in your virality in, in the post-Soviet uh, sphere? Do you? I think so. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, this video. I was wearing a very Soviet-looking uh, uh, thing. Yeah, uh, beret. Uh, <laughs> they're probably like. I have never seen a, a, a Soviet move this way before. You no, know? no, no, no. Uh, they thought. They thought <laughs> They, <laughs> you're like who? Who? Who is this? You know, like, yeah, yeah. They thought uh, you were sent from the future. Like, of I touch the about <laughs> but nice. I, I, I mean, actually, with that, with that, had had the video been seen by the right people anyway? Because like the the the, the few hundred followers I got in Ukraine from this group, like when, when it was on Techno Germany, then it just like went like this, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I think, I think it was the, the, the caliber of the content anyway, regardless of like yeah. the um, Eastern Bloc 
uh, you, you think it's just nice for people to sometimes see how those parties uh, are from from the inside is it important at all for people to know and to see how how our, our parties look like is it important yeah is it a, um, could it be a part of, when uh, you, when of you, it sorry go on yeah all good, all good. i'm just uh, asking if it if it if it's a possible thing for you to or it's a not impossible thing i, I Does it matter to you if the world outside of our uh, party community know uh, about what is going on inside? Because like the idea of Lovery, for example, was that Dr. Moto said, uh, let the people know who we are, you know, and how we look like. That's, what do you think of it? That's... <sighs> it depends. Yeah. And it depends on what is meant by the people. You know, mm -hmm. because who 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 is the people? Is the people anybody who's not in the scene? Is it people who think they're in the scene? Mm. You know, is everybody? It, everybody? Then no is the answer. Mm. Uh, no is the no is a strong no because mm. um, the only the people who are understand it and are aware of it are in it. People may understand it but not be aware of it. These mm -hmm. are people that should know, right? Mm -hmm. Then there are people who are appropriating it. Then there are people who are wildly against it because of the threat it represents to them, you know? Or they just it makes them feel so shit because their lives are a complete lie and they see this expression of freedom and joy and realize that either they're so far from it and they can't don't have the courage to take that leap or it makes them, you know, like toxic, mm -hmm. toxic shit. Yeah. I don't want them to know about it because then, they're, then, they're, then they're like, unless it can inspire them as yeah. a catalyst for change, I don't yeah, want them. The I, algorithm doesn't really know? do that differentiation. I, I'm afraid that's the the thing. And the uh, algorithm, yeah. For, for, for I mean, if you put out something out there in social media, uh, oh, you, you can't that, control this. It's like yeah, it's, either, it's either putting it as a as a as a an available content, but obviously, a lot of the people who don't care about the scene or don't care about this stuff or don't want to know about it or don't like it, chances of them coming across it are pretty low unless mm -hmm. they've got a real bugbear about it or unless, you know, like... The algorithm has a natural choice. I mean, to an extent, I mean, you, like yeah. with any with any content online, you get shown you get shown more of yourself. You get shown you get shown what you like, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's like, I, I think that generally speaking, people that find this stuff are people that are looking for it generally speaking you know and it's fine you know mm. I nice mean, it, I, i don't i don't i don't think i don't think like um there's there's going to be any significant negative uh implications of there being a knowledge of what's happening you know yeah. because even if there's knowledge of it it still doesn't mean people understand it yeah. i mean i mean like my like my dad would never understand me standing in front of someone just doing this you know <laughs> like, but why rob you know yeah <laughs> so, like like and it's fine like, like it just like it makes you happy yeah yeah enjoy yourself you know yeah i get it I get it, and uh, me, me too. I have like, oh, like I would say, mixed feelings about uh, creating uh, a content that is just uh, the naked truth of the the party. It has uh, two sides for me, you know. On one hand, you want people to know of the aesthetic and what you observe and feel, and that in these moments, and in the other, you don't want it to get to an audience that doesn't really get it on the third side that you want to educate and you want people to maybe see and feel how uh, something new and different looks like uh yeah so very mixed feelings about uh, <laughs> photographing or, or filming uh our content which i enjoy and love and love creating you know i mean if you love it and it's an expression of something that's bringing people joy like then by definition there are going to yeah. be people that it pisses off yeah Absolutely. That's it. Yeah. That's it. It's not that I a doubt anything. what we're doing. I just, I, I, th I think uh, uh, it's a thin line or the community has defined a thin line. I mean, look, they, look, put it this way. Like fundamentally, fundamentally, um, what, what is being created is entertainment. You mm -hmm. know, fundamentally it's entertainment, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so 
you can you can sleep well compared to let's say I don't know a clothing brand a certain clothing brand that makes uh, people who understand the culture that they are appropriating subjectively subjectively uh, yeah uh, will make them feel sick because it's a fucking joke you know yeah uh, and because they're profiteering from something where you're yeah. providing entertainment you know so, yeah. so you're taking issue with with, with with like okay so this scene as we say this is huge I mean, I say huge now because actually, like, uh, there's, there's layers. There's layers to the scene, you know. Yeah. And what, what I like, my scene is very different to, uh, you know, the the what what someone who is not in the scene would see or as, has his own scene. Ah, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. And uh, so, so it's like definitely, definitely, there is this element of of like yeah, appropriation, you know. Yeah. Um, which I know you've been accused of. Yeah, um, we've been accused all the time of appropriating uh, different stuff, and I sometimes, what sometimes, I, I actually every time I try to listen and to understand why, and to go a little bit into the depth of it, and um, somehow I always come to just a, a more or less a toxic uh, motive to 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 this us, you know. And I just understood that uh, that's why I come back to the definition of scene and why I don't like using it, because I think there is a scene for everybody. And if you create, if you're a creator, basically, with time, you will have a scene around you, a circle of people around you. Mm -hmm. And at the end, then you create your own scene. You know, and people who use the term scene, they are running around a circle that they don't belong to, probably. And... This searching is. for uh, how can I maybe get in there? So, yeah. so this, 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 this what is, does this one is, do this for is the like scene? Reading, reading my mind with, with like, um, like I, I, uh, I've, I've had, I've had, I've had, I've had um, people that I don't know, strangers, um, messaging me wanting to, wanting to meet, you know, like not because we met before not because legit just because they 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 they've seen something they like you know and it is it's like it's like um, i've seen the scene <laughs> so 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 with this like with with um with techno uh <coughs> being being cool right now like dubstep yeah. was in 2011 whatever was it ever um allegedly yeah. i mean it cooler than it cooler than the clothing shout brand out to dubstep about. fans shout out to Skrillex. We accept you all. Um, Not that anybody asked us, <laughs> yeah, but so so with with, um, with 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 techno being cool now, yeah, and it being cool to wear, you know, a certain style of clothing because it in because of what it indicates. Okay, okay. Is there like a way to just use a new piece of paper every time, or yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> looks like a, is that a game? Well. Well, I, I, I lost my trailer of thought anyway, so we yeah, can... Yeah, all we good. Can, we can... Uh, all good, all good. These talks about the scene. <laughs> um, so you realize some, some videos are viral and maybe you saw the, the birth of your own, uh, I would say, avatar for the last time today. And uh, um, did you feel like you're having like a new role or a new responsibility as you said you said like with power comes responsibility did you feel that responsibility falling on your shoulders as soon as you knew that people are like um, you're becoming a symbol to some people uh phew, really good question weight um, on your shoulders so there's also layers to that one yeah um, because uh over time with interactions with I don't want to say fans, followers, we're interactions with followers, you know, um, and realizing the significance I've had to their life when I've never even met them, just from them observing my content and what I say about it. It made me think, okay, shit, well, actually, like, I, I am somehow a role model to some people. Um, <clears throat> and that puts this, like, like, interesting dynamic where, like, Obviously, I'm trying to understand, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to like, if I inspire someone to be empowered and express themselves because they've seen me doing it, then fucking amazing. Mm. But if I make them um, obsessed with me because they see what I'm doing, I think they can't do it. Or 
or uh, or insecure about me, and then that becoming toxic and either aggressive or whatever, then this is not this is not what I'm wanting to inspire. But it's it's what it's the situation that's in front of me. You know, yeah. um, what what I have realized with the responsibility of like okay, like actually, what's more important than how these people feel about me is how I feel about these people. It's about me being able to grow enough to draw my boundaries and in the process inspire some people even more and fuck off some even more, you know? Mm -hmm. And I have managed I have managed recently to improve, but I'm still I mean obviously with the increased profile comes more extreme situations of this and more bigger learnings, you know. Um, but I've managed recently to detach myself more from the feelings of strangers wanting to be kind well, sorry wanting to be nice but realizing i need to be kind mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. kind being tough love I was, I was like hey yo 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 thanks but right now my priority is this yeah you know yeah and that's like woof, okay and then they're like okay fair enough i'm still still training hard on this one hey me too and and but but the the, the more you train the bigger the what the next challenge to grow more and you know it, it's it's a process it's a process and and you know you often don't know what your boundaries are until they're crossed hmm. um but this is now it's not about boundary it's not sorry it's not about it's not about um being a being a role model is about is about me setting boundaries which actually ironically makes me the best fucking role model because that's the most important <laughs> thing you know set your boundaries <laughs> <laughs> right, so you see you see uh, so so it, it, it's helped me be more authentic because at first at first my ego loved it you know when when um i i i, I was showing me all these messages hey, hey look look what this random person sent me you know mm -hmm. um but now now i'm just like oh my god and actually I, I i ignore most messages that get sent to me with like random expectations from strangers you know um unless there's something meaningful meaningful or relevant you know that yeah you know that i can i can engage with and learn from yeah nice time to wrap it up bro yeah all good <laughs> set up set the boundary <clears throat> it was uh, super nice uh, having you again and I hope that we can uh, go to deeper into one or two two themes that we've mentioned uh, today and get even more concrete and open and we are open enough but I mean you know I think uh, we have found a kind of a platform to 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 be honest and I think honesty and compassion is a little bit uh, lacking in our I wouldn't say scene I just I would say town yeah. I would say world, actually. <coughs> yeah. Um, I would say but world. we 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 can we can have. I mean, we have seen, and this is <laughs> a topic for future. Yeah. Um, how much influence we can have on people around us. Yeah. On events as a result, and as a result in bringing back safe spaces that our parties have been missing and our clubs have been missing, and where events that promote themselves as safe spaces are actually. <laughs> yeah, agreeing, agreeing. Uh -huh. like, actually, you know, talk talk success pools for predators. Like Aristo or Socrates, Mark, uh, the the priority of or like the hierarchy of uh, of uh, people greatness. Uh, first, um, small people like they they talk about other people. Uh, mediocre people they talk about events, and great people talk about ideas. Mm. Yeah, so that was your. Um, I liked your description. My, that my rise to greatness was it? That, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Super Classic. nice. <laughs> yeah, we can affect maybe what uh, people, um, people, and then events and then ideas. Absolutely. Super nice. Um, yeah, we'll we'll we'll, um, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go into a few more topics deeper, more than one or two, I hope, and yeah, uh, not get too yeah. concrete because we want to yeah. be flexible still. Yes. So we bamboo. Order. We want to be teasing. <laughs> Good. <laughs> See you all soon. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. anyone and everyone that tuned in. We'll be back. <laughs> yeah. See you also. What do you say at the end of the podcast? You don't say see you all soon. No, no, hear you, hear you, <laughs> hear us all soon. Hear us all soon. Bye. Juicy. How long was that? How long was that?